It's Talking Pints. I'm joined by Daniel O'Reilly, Acker Dapper Laughs, comedian. <laughs> well, welcome to Talking Pints. Good to well, be I'm back on TV. Well, well, given that you were banned, you know, quite rightly, really. Yeah. Now, listen. <laughs> <He's straight laughs> in the, yeah. no. Daniel, you were, you know, young comedian. Yeah. Doing well. Yeah, yeah. Building your reputation. Yeah. Possibly pushing the edges a bit. Yeah, I did. I pushed, yeah, a lot, a lot. I think it's tricky being a comedian. It's very tricky being young and immature and a comedian. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, we all say we all say stupid things when we're when we're when we're younger. Do you know what I mean? And um, uh, unfortunately, I was on a big platform on a big TV show and said some, ITV, ITV, I, yeah. ITV two, yeah, made some mistakes, said some silly stuff. Um, you know, and luckily, I've been lucky enough, really, that um, I'm social media based and I've got a really loyal social media following. They know that there was, you know, I've got a, a big following. Right, let's just get back to this for yeah, a second. Yeah, go on. So what you said was blooming stupid. Yeah, of course. Of course Pretty yeah. insulting to a woman in the audience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you admitted it was it was wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff was taken out of context at the time, um, but I still said stupid stuff. Yeah, it was blown well out of proportion, but I did say uh, some stupid stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, looking back on it, it's um, it could. It, it, it upset a lot of people, but again, I was young and I was trying to be controversial, I think, at the time. So you get cancelled? Get cancelled, yeah. Suddenly, the chance to go and do gigs around the country? Yeah, it was more than that. My TV show got cancelled. Uh, 60,000 people signed a petition to cancel. When I think back on it, it's... Yeah, it. I, mean, I was one of them. No, go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's a good thing yeah. I'm not drinking anymore. We could have a wild, wild argument. No, but, you know, uh, but I, I've got two daughters now, so if I heard a comedian saying that sort of stuff back then, I probably, I probably too would have, would have kicked off. And, um, you know, but I lost a lot from it, and rightly so maybe at the time, but I, I felt it was a little bit harsh. And I lost the TV show, lost, yep. lost my management, lost all my gigs, lost all my money, lost my house, lost my sanity. And um, Your so, life, sp yeah, your life spiralled down into a pit, didn't it? Yeah, and um, my mental health... Uh, for, for a part, and I learnt a lot of lessons through it. And um, I drink. think drink, drink was that's why I'm sober now, you know. Um, drinking, I was very much part of the drink and, and party culture and sesh culture and everything growing up, and that was my coping mechanism through it. And that got really out of control, yeah. So uh, I use when I you've use, go on, sorry. No, when you've you know, and we all have ups and downs in life, yeah, we all do, yeah, yeah, but. This was a pretty big down, Daniel, that you were going through here. Yeah, it's horrific. How did you manage to bottom out? Was it therapy? What was it that managed to turn you around? I think, like a lot of famous people say, like Tyson Fury and things like that, like you, could, you, you can only sort of start making your way up once you hit rock bottom. And I, I became heavy, heavy into the drinks. I was suicidal at one point and... Um, you know, my father passed away. It's a very real dark time. And I just, I don't know, I lost control of a lot of things in my life. And um, I just had to get through that stage and then get back to work. And I think I was lucky enough, really, that enough people knew there, was, there wasn't real malice in what I was doing. And I managed to just pull it back. But, and this is the important yeah. point about this conversation tonight. Yeah. There are limits to comedy, aren't there? 100%. There are limits. And I think... Uh, but it's, it, times are changing very quick, so the limits of what you can say change. Change. I mean, I was one of the first to get cancelled because I was. I think I was like really pushing it, just as things were turning really, really strict and really. You know, you got to be really careful with what you're saying. But look, now it's even harder as a comedian. Do you know what I mean? It really is. But I've learned. I learned through it, and uh, I'm, I'm. I still get it wrong sometimes now. So what can you joke about now? Um, Politics. <laughs> well, no, no uh, that's a tragic comedy. No, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, look, you can joke about anything. I think you just it's, you just got to do it intelligently. Uh, um, and you know, there's some comedians out there that don't really care. Do you know what I mean? You have got like Jimmy Carr, Ricky Gervais. You never see them apologising. You won't see them getting cancelled because. I think once you get to a certain level and you're a certain certain well, size. Yeah, I wondered with Ricky Gervais particularly whether perhaps we're beginning to see, see a little bit of pushback mm. and a little bit of I think that. he's too big to cancel. I think, I think some, I think uh, for me, like I was coming up, I was very new. I was easy to stump out and get rid of. I didn't really have enough time to learn, learn um, where the line was. I just went straight So there's in. no bitterness? Pardon? There's no bitterness with you about what happened? Um, I wouldn't say that. I, I'm still quite bitter about how hard people went in on, on me. But... 
I, I, I can admit that um, you know I needed I needed a telling off to, to sort out sort out my stuff. And luckily, like I said, you know now I'm back. I'm, I'm I, you know I've got me me tours coming out next year. I've been doing films. I'm back. I'm on GB, GB News. News. I'm on GB News. I'm doing headliners on GB News. Where all the best cancellers come to yeah. come to perform. Um, and look. Like I say, we all said stupid things when we were younger, and I'm just blessed that I'm I'm I'm, I'm back out and I've, I've got the social media following, um, and I like talking about serious stuff in my comedy now. I like using my platform. Like for instance, I use my platform heavily now to talk about sobriety, talk about men's mental health, talk about um, you know coping mechanisms with drink and drugs. Well, and you've stuff also like been that. sort of doing podcasting and and, 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 big... and, and and a bit of help. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm never sure quite you know where we go with all this stuff, but you kind of you know. You're saying to men, it's not a problem to admit you've got a problem. Yeah, hundred percent. I think. Look, first of all, I, I was part. I was a very lads lad, so I was involved in a lot of that stuff. And Is that uh, a bad thing? Um, I think when you've got a big platform and you can be too laddy, my comedy got me in trouble a little bit with that. But being a lads lad, I don't think I don't think it's a bad thing, not at all. But our culture is like very much so with this show. The culture is talking over a pint. The culture, the, the, yeah. the culture with men is really the only time they get together and talk is when they're drinking. And the, the problem sometimes when that can be is when they want to open up. Or, or when they've got problems, they associate it with the alcohol. The alcohol becomes, and the drugs, become a coping mechanism. When something goes There's well... no drugs on Talking Pints, I promise you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> no, no, That's not what no, you no. said before the shot. No. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, and look, m m what I'm doing right now, because I know I've got a massive lads audience, I've created a podcast called mm. Menace to Sobriety. So anyone out there that's struggling, um, that thinks they've got an unhealthy relationship with drink or drugs, um, I talk openly about how I used it to cope and stuff like that. And I think it's important for men to, to understand that drinking casually, like you are sociably, is fantastic, but if you've got problems in your life and you're turning to that, or that's making it worse, then then you can you can reevaluate your relationship. And there's life outside of alcohol. And um, I'm just trying to give back a little bit. I believe in karma, and I think now that things are going well for me again, instead of just taking, reaping the rewards from my social media and the films and stuff, I think it's important to, to, to give back and try and help the people that are there. Yeah, you know this whole, I mean? it is interesting, isn't it? I mean, Andrew Tate built this massive global yeah. following. And, you know, he was saying, look, let lads be lads. Yeah, yeah. Let men be men. Um, and up to a point, quite a lot of what he said made sense. Yeah. And then we stepped clearly... Yeah, yeah. Into territory where he wasn't even joking. Yeah. You know, yeah, this yeah. was open. He called himself a misogynist, yeah. et cetera. And now, well, goodness knows what will happen to him in the future. But we mustn't... All I wanted to say to you, Daniel, was we don't want to completely eradicate the idea of boys being boys, do we? No, I think we need to educate boys, uh, educate men. And I think, you know, the banter and manliness and having mates and being together is important. I think it's sorely lacked as well. Men, not enough men have men around them. Not enough men have good male, male role models. But the problem is, with myself and someone like Andrew Tate as well, is once you've said stupid stuff in the past, it's very difficult. But you've been forgiven. I, I don't know. I, I feel like it now. I feel like it. I feel like people are a little bit more open to me, maybe because I've grown up and I've got children and I'm doing positive things. I, I'm certainly getting a lot more opportunities happening now. So, so. you're off on tour? I'm off on tour next year. Um, Let's get cancelled, I'm going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how long. I might be back on here saying I'm, I'm out again. But um, I'm off on tour next year. I've got big films coming out. You know, I've been making films um, that, that are going well. I'm producing films. Films are coming out. Social media is going well. I'm getting gigs. I'm on GB News. I'm happy and I'm keeping it calm. And the tour, is this sort of theatres? Is it? Yeah, where, where, big... where do you do your events? Um, I did, my last show was at the O2, actually. Yep. Yeah, and I've done the Troxy before that, but uh, I'm not sure on the dates and stuff. I've got a proper promoter working with me now, which yep. is nice. It's refreshing to have that again. And, uh, yeah, we'll be doing a big tour next year. So, um, And I just want to be a lot more intelligent, and I want to use the comedy and use the platform to talk about serious stuff, do you know what I mean, like this stuff. So, As a comedian, who do you look up to in the comedy world? I definitely look up to Ricky Gervais because I think he's got a beautiful way of being offensive <laughs> and, but, but also making people feel stupid for finding it offensive. I think you can be really intelligent with, with the way that you deliver comedy. I definitely wasn't um, back in the day. I just sort of say, say it how it is. But he really tackles some important um, issues that, that people... It's very difficult to joke about stuff that... Like, there's a lot of subjects, a lot of things that are going on at the moment. Like, for instance, 
um, you know, all this transgender stuff, gender mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. All of this stuff is very scary. I've got two daughters. I'm always watching this stuff. I'm very concerned about men that identify as women wandering into women's toilets and being put in women's oh, prisons. Oh, you're a transphobe. Uh, exactly. That's <laughs> what's got gonna, him. Got that's, him. That's, that's He's going to be cancelled again. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is, you know, you, you now my views on things are very different because I've got daughters. And, and, and now that when I try and talk about these things in a joking fashion, it's like you're in a minefield, you know? And uh, it's very difficult, but I think someone like Ricky Gervais manages to negotiate that perfectly. So I look up to people that are intelligent with the way they put serious points across. Television, I mean, you know, 70s and 80s used to do comedy in a huge way. It was a big part of, you know, ITV, Saturday nights Mm. and all the rest of it. Where's it gone? It's almost like... Is, is, is comedy now almost sort of underground? It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, you have to search for stand-up comedy and you have to search. They don't have them, like, t- big shows and big Saturday night shows where comedy's going. I think everyone's too scared, to be honest with you, but I think we definitely need more of it. We need, we need more of that game show, that comedy game show stuff, you know? Like the old Barrymore stuff. Maybe not Barrymore, but... Well, yeah. again, <laughs> again yeah. the, whoever you talk about, you may... Yeah, oh, my God, yeah. You may have a problem yeah. whoever you talk about. And when you see the country today, because one of the things comedians do is observe. Yeah. We're not that happy at the minute, are we? The country is an absolute mess, and I think I'm very in tune with real working-class people. You know, my friends are all working-class lads. I've got a big group. Uh, we've got, like, a wolf pack group where all the, all the lads are in there talking, and we talk every day about the state of the economy, the state of... The, but I'll tell you how people feel at the moment, that, that, that the government... It, the government it doesn't care, you know. You've got the working class people, you've got the, the the nurses, you've got everyone going on strike. The government don't care about them. The government care about stupid things, uh, focusing on stupid things, and, and not the average everyday worker. They're struggling out there. They've got no money, and you've I'll got people. I tell you what, I you tell know. you what, Daniel, you can be as rude and offensive about politicians as you like, and no one's going to cancel you right really? at this moment in time. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's I, I, I don't think people are happy, to be honest with you. No, nor do I. Well, maybe you can go on tour and cheer them up. Daniel, thank you for thank joining you. me on Talking Pies. It's Pines. great to be back. Oh, well done, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>